on tonight and we want to thank you for being a part of our VBS which is our theme tonight when faith meets real life and we are thankful for you and any visitors that we may have thank God for you on tonight of course we want to thank those who've gone previously and have shared great messages with us on last night brother Archie Veal shared with us a great thought regarding Rahab, and then, of course, was one tonight, Tim Taylor talked about Abraham's journey. Well, we'll read it tonight with our teacher, none other than Brother Sam Bryan, which we all know, Brother Sam Bryan, he and his wife, faithful members of the church, helps us in all directions, multi uh, particular talented to do a number of things, and he's going to focus his attention on Job tonight to help us in our walk in life. We're going to ask that Brother Hall will give our opening prayer. Then that'll be followed by a song by Brother Jones. After the song, then Brother Sam will return back to us and share with us the lesson. We're gonna ask each one as we have done in the past to make sure to mute yourself. Brother Good is also going to mute you so there'll be less very less interference so we all can hear the message. So we're ready to get started on this evening. Thus, we're going to ask Brother Hall, open us in a word of prayer. Brother Hall. <clears throat> Let us go to God in prayer. Dear Father, we come once again just thanking you for your grace and for your mercy, for your love, Father. We thank you, Father, for this uh, Vacation Bible Cruise School Wednesday night. We pray, Father, that the things that we learn may enlighten us to your will and your way. We pray, Father, that the things may help us um, as we make this Christian journey, as trials and tribulations come along. We pray, Father, you might bless Brother Bryant, that he recall those things that he studied, that we may be strengthened, Father, in our faith, Father. We pray for everyone that is on this prayer call, Father, that they may be enlightened and strengthened also, Father, from the lesson. So bless us, Father, bless this class. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good evening once again, everyone. Uh, we're excited. Uh, although you are muted, uh, still I would encourage you to sing along. We're going to sing a short hymn and then um, 
make way for Brother Sam Bryant. Anyway, you bless me, Lord. You know I, I'll be satisfied. Anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord. You know I, I'll be satisfied. Anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord. You know I'll be satisfied. Anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord. You know that I'll be satisfied. Anyway, 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 you bless me, Lord. You know I'll be satisfied. But anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord. You know I'll, I'll be satisfied. Anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord. You know I'll, I'll be satisfied. Anyway, anyway, you bless me, Lord. You know I'll be satisfied. <clears throat> Again, I'd like to say good evening to all. And again, it's a blessing um, that God has blessed us all with another opportunity to again come together that we might <clears throat> study another portion of his word. I want to thank, um, thank, thank God for this opportunity. Uh, I'd like to thank Brother Rupert for, again, his confidence in allowing me this opportunity, this privilege of standing before you tonight I'd also like to thank Brother Tim Taylor, who kicked us off talking about the journey of Abraham, and also Brother Archie Veal on last night, who spoke to us about the great faith of Rahab. And on tonight, we're challenged with looking at the aspect of the suffering of Job. But we know that our, our, our theme is when faith, when faith, <clears throat> When faith meets real life, when faith meets real life. And for my portion, uh, my portion of this lesson is when faith meets real life, um, um, and specifically as we look at the suffering, the suffering of Job. But you know, I'm reminded of, as we've looked at the study of Abraham and Rahab and now tonight of Job, I'm reminded of Paul as he wrote in Romans the 15th chapter, verses four, where he says that the things that were written aforetime, that were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures, that we might have hope. So the great, the, there's a great value in those things that were written of old times. We can make application, we can look at the application as it, as it related to that time and that era. And we can also correlate those um, situations and correlate them with our particular day and time now in terms of how those, um, how the scripture applies even to us tonight. Well, as you know, as we think about Job and as we consider Job, there's so much about Job. So we're gonna take a portion of Job and try to take our focus there. But in a nutshell, when you look at the story of Job, there's one thing that's, 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 plain, that's plain and clear, is that Satan is not just concerned with us giving up. He's not just concerned, he, he, he's not concerned with us giving in. He's not concerned with um, how much pain we go through. Satan's real goal, his, his ultimate goal, is to make man turn his back on God. That's, his, that's, the, that's the jewel of Satan's devices. It's to, to turn the soul, to turn the hearts of man against the great God, the great God of heaven. Before I get too far, I, I, need, to, I need to back up. So, um, Today, today, my wife and I, we, we celebrated our 37th anniversary. And I want to thank God for those blessings. And um, before I get too far ahead of myself, and I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be who I am without her. And I thank God for her. And I thank God um, again for 
um, of this privilege to stand before you tonight. So let's talk tonight. As, as we look, we're going to look at Job and we're going to look at Job's suffering. We're sort of going to take a snapshot of his suffering as, it, as, it, as we see it read or the dialogue between God, the Lord, and, and Satan himself. And then also what I want to do is in, in relations to the question that, that's posed on us with regards to our theme, when, when, when faith meets real life, there's, there's, there's four things that I want to cover with you. When faith meets real life, faith is on trial. When faith meets real life, it requires a spiritual response on behalf of believers. And when faith meets real life, we have to exercise some sp uh, our spiritual sobriety. And when faith meets real life, the result is a far, can be a far more exceeding weight of glory that awaits those that are faithful and those that hold true to God's word. I'm going to try to share my screen here. Let's see, uh, and you can go to slide number one. As we consider tonight, we want to look at Job. Um, and one last thing I'll tell you about, about this idea of, of when faith meets real life. When faith meets real life, we have to make a choice. And the choice that we have to make is whether or not we're going to be faithful. We're going to be faithful to God. Um, slide number two. Yes. So our, our text tonight was taken off in, in, in Job chapter one. In Job chapter one, beginning at, at verse number one, I want, us to, I want us to see who this man Job is. Who is Job? And the Bible says that there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was a perfect and upright. He was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and shunned, eschewed, or he shunned evil. And that word perfect there, he is not from the standpoint that he was without sin, but he was um he was he was um he was without blame that, and that no accusation could be brought against him or held up. But the book says that he was from the, he was from the land of us. He, and um, he was perfect. He was upright. He was one that, that, that feared God and he ensured evil. In other words, he went out all out of his way uh, to, uh, to avoid anything that had anything to do with evil. You know, I, I, I visit the land of us. I was actually, if, if you go to um, slide number two for me, Brother Good. So uh, the land of us is, is if you look right where the, um, yes, right there, do you see where that little cone is there, Brother Good? Right on the other side, to the left there. Yes, on the other side, on the other side. No, no, on the other side, yes. No, no, on the other side, really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit too far. Left of the U, left of the U. Oh. Yeah, yeah, right up in there, right up in there. That, that, that's actually, um, I spent some time in that area um, in, the, in the country of Oman. And Oman, in Oman, one of the cities in the country of Oman is a city called Salala. And Salala is actually um, the place where it's known now as the land of us. Um, I, when I was in that particular area, I had the fortune uh, of visiting what was considered the de the burial um, the the burial place of of Job himself. Also important about the land of us in that particular region there. In fact, this is a little bit. This is. Us would be just north of Yemen and just east of Saudi Arabia. But also from this particular area in Salala is where it was it said that the, the, wide, the three wise men from the east that traveled um, to Bethlehem were from. And Salala is a place where they, it's the Mecca of, of um, frankincense. 
And if you remember, those wise men were able to carry um, the frankincense as a gift for, for the newborn. But, but interesting enough, you know, it, it dawned on me, I, I wish I had um, photographs for, of that, but the land of Uz, it sits on the, in the Gulf, right at, at the edge of the Gulf of Oman there over in the Middle East. You can go back to that slide, number one, but, but, but again, so as we look in, I got I got to haste on, and as we look in verse number, verse number two, um, this man, Job, Job, we know that Job, he, um, he had seven sons and he had three daughters. His substance, the Bible says, um, he had great substance. He had a thousand sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen. He had 500 she asses or donkeys. And he had a great household, meaning he had, he had great, a great number of, of servants that, was, that, were, that worked for him. And the book says, and that this man was the greatest man of all of the East. And, and, and so, 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 so his profile is that he, he is a wealthy man. He's a man. He is a family man. He has children. He, not only does he have children, he has daughters and sons. And, and, and that showing the future of his generation, the, his name being carried on even for many generations. The book said it talked about in verse number four how how he had his sons would would, would come together and they would have a feast um, with their sisters and they would drink and 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 you remember we said earlier that Job was one that he eschewed he shunned evil he didn't want to have anything that was close to being evil a part of him and so when his the books the Bible says gives us a picture of when his when his sons and daughters would come together and they would, would drink and they would have a feast, the Bible says that, that, that Job, because he shunned evil, what he would do is that afterwards he would offer sacrifices on behalf of each of, of his kids. And he says, perhaps, perhaps they had cursed God, perhaps they have sinned, Perhaps they have walked disorderly again because he had so much integrity about himself. He didn't want anything to do with anything that had anything to do with evil, but not only for himself, but also even, even for his children. I think that that's, that gives us a great picture of the man Job himself. And so, and, and, and so, so we have the pedigree of Job. And it's interesting that God chooses Job for this great assignment. You see, God, he, he gives us this background of who Job is. He tells us of his integrity, and he talks about how he's upright. And so it, it lets us know that Job is really up for the task that's really going to be at hand. So when you look at verse number six of, of, of chapter one, the Bible tells us, we, it gives us a, um, introduces us to the, a, a dialogue, the first dialogue between the Lord and, and Satan himself. Well, the book says that um, there came a day when the sons of God, they came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came with them also. Now, isn't that kind of interesting? Now, what that says to us is that Satan is truly an opportunist. He don't, he don't miss out on any opportunity. Here it is, the sons of God were, were, were meeting with the Lord, and the book says and Satan had the audacity to show up. Satan will show up at your home. He will show up on your job. He will show up at the church house. He will show up in your meeting rooms. He'll show up in your bedroom. He won't, he won't, he won't. He won't pass out, pass on any opportunity to show himself. But what we have to understand about Satan is that, again, his whole purpose, because when you look at the name Satan itself, it means the accuser. It's the one that accuses, the one that makes acquisition. He is the adversary. He is the arch rival or arch enemy of God himself. And so, so in verse number six, the Bible says that, that the sons of God, they came together 
and Satan himself had the audacity to show up. But then the Lord said unto Satan, where you been, Satan? Where you coming from? And Satan says, um, he says, I'm, I, I've been going to and fro in the earth, and I've been walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, which when you look at verse number eight, verse number eight, and it gives us, it implies to us that something else was discussed in, in verse number seven. Because all Satan said was that I've been going to and fro, up and down in the earth. And, 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 and so something was said and it, um, in addition, but in verse number eight, the Lord responds. He says, has, has thou considered my servant Job? Now look how God validates Job. He says, there is none like him in the earth. He's a perfect, he's perfect and he's upright and he's a man. He's one that feareth God and he ensures or he shuns evil. And Satan answered and said this. Does Job fear God for naught? Satan said, Job, Lord, Job don't fear you for naught. He said, does he fear you for naught? Have you not put a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has and that you have blessed him on every side? And you have blessed his work. You have blessed his hands. You blessed his substance with great increase. He said, that's why, that's why Job is, uh, uh, is following you, God. And, Joe, and, and, and Satan goes farther. He says, Put forth your hand, Lord, against him and touch all that he had and he will curse you to your face. Remember, I told you, Satan is the accuser. Satan is the adversary. He is the opponent. And his job is to turn the hearts of man from God. So God, so God takes the, his righteous servant. In verse number 12, the Lord said, he said unto Satan, behold, all that he hath is in your power, only upon himself, and put not thy hand, don't touch him. And so Satan went from the presence of the Lord. So Satan, so Satan, here he is, he has an opportunity, and again, he wants nothing more than to derail, to, to, to bring, uh, to turn uh, man's heart against God, and especially, especially Job. And why Job? Because God said he was upright. God said that he was a perfect man. God said that he was blameless. God said that he feared God and he shunned evil. And so, and so, 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 so Job is a primary target for Satan. Because if Satan think, if Satan can dethrone the righteous man, he can, he can shake his finger in the face of God. And, Satan, and, and so Satan says, move your head, move the head, and touch all that, he's had, that, he, that he has, and Job will curse you to his face. Now see, integrity, you know, when you think about this idea of, of integrity, integrity says what integrity really means in a nutshell is what will you do when no one else is looking? What will you do when, 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 when no one else can, uh, is, is present, when you are challenged with suffering, when you're challenged with pain, when you're challenged with the, the woes of this life? And so God says to Satan, he said, he said, all that he has, but don't put your hands on it. Now I want to show you how, 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 how look, look at this picture that the Bible paints for us about, about Job and his substance. So, so in, in verse number 11, he says, touch all that he has. If you touch all that he has, Lord, he'll curse you. In other words, if, if, if you suffer him to lose all that he has, if you suffer him to, to feel the pain from the death of his children, 
if you suffer him to lose all of his wealth, he's going to turn and curse you. And so the Lord said, don't touch him. And so we see that in verse 13, there was a day when the uh, when there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating. I want you to picture this because we, we, you know, we experience a lot of suffering. We experience a lot of challenges in, in life itself. <clears throat> but here is Job. His children, the Bible says in verse 13, are eating, <clears throat> excuse me, and they're drinking at his brother's house. And a messenger in verse 14 comes and says to Job, the oxen were plowing and their donkey, their asses were feeding, and the Sabians fell upon them and took them away, and, 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 and they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am left to tell thee. And while he was yet speaking, there came another and said, the fire God is fallen from heaven and is burnt down, is burnt up your sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I'm the only one that's escaped to tell you. And even that's not enough because the Bible says, and while he was yet speaking, there came another and he said, the Chaldeans. They made out three bands and they fell upon the camels and they've carried them away. They've slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I'm only, I'm only. And came also and that sons and that, and, and, and so, and, and, and while he was speaking, there came another and he says, your daughters, your sons and your daughters, they, they were eating and they were drinking at the elder's brother's house. And there came a great wind from heaven. And it smoked the four corners of the, of the house and it, and it fell upon the young men and all of them, all your children, all three of your daughters, all seven of your sons, they are dead. And I only are alone to tell you I show you just how human Job is. Remember, he's lost his, he's lost his, <clears throat> he's lost his cow. He's lost his herd. He's lost his servants. He's lost his children. He's just as much a man as you and I are today. <clears throat> he suffered one tragedy after another. When faith meets real life, Job keeps it all in perspective. It shows us why God chose Job, because we look, we can see Job's response. After hearing all of this dark news, the Bible says that he got up and he rent his mantle. And he shaved his head and he fell down on the ground and he worshiped. Not only did he worship, Job had these famous words that we hear. We hear. He said, naked I came, naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return. It's the Lord they gave and the Lord had taken away Blessed be the name of the Lord. Isn't that a blessing? And, and, and the book says, in, 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 in verse 22, in all of this, in losing all of his wealth, all of his cattle, all of his donkeys, because the donkeys were going to make him more money because they were female. They were female, and they could produce even more. He lost all of his all of his cattle. He lost all of his herd. He lost all of his servants. He lost all of his children. No possibility of having grandchildren and generations to come. He lost all that he had in one day. And he had the presence to worship God, to pray to God. 
and to be reminded that how he came into this world and to know who, who it is that owned all that he had. He said, the Lord gave and the Lord took it away. And he says, blessed be the name of the Lord. And look at this slap in Satan's face because the book says, in all this, Job sinned not. Not only did he not sin, but he did not foolishly charge God. Isn't that some? See, sometimes you, you might not sin, but sometimes we can think some foolish things. But Job had the presence, the spiritual presence, when his faith met real life, to keep his life in perspective and to keep his, 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 his duty to serve and worship God. Again, remember, he was an upright man. And God chose him to be an example for us today. And remember, so, so remember in chapter one, when, when, when God had this dialogue, when he had this dialogue with Satan, Satan said, touch all that he has, and he's going to turn, he's going to curse you. And so, and so God removed it. God allowed Satan he gave him free reign, except for taking his life. And, 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 and God already knew the heart. He knew the man. He knew the man, Job. You know, all of, all of all the Bible characters one might, or might, might envy or wish they could have been, I don't know if I would have wanted to be Job because of the end result. But 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 that's that's but that's when 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 life meets real when when faith rather meets real life and so let's move on a little bit in chapter number two because I want to show you just a slight difference and be so so in, in in chapter one what Job said is that move the things uh, he, Job was more concerned about the the things of life that 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 Job had or Satan was concerned about the things of life that Job had, his wealth, his children, his servants. Those were the things that, that, that Satan was banking on, that he was counting, that if God, if, if, if God, if he could be stricken with, with, with suffering, if he could be stricken with the loss of, of all of his earnings, that all these things would cause him to turn against God. And so, and so what we find in, in, in chapter two, in chapter two, the book says in verse number one, and again, so it tells us that this is a different conversation. This is not the same day conversation, but he says, and again, there was a day in verse number one, when, when the sons of God, they came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them to present himself. I want you to see the distinction between chapter one and chapter two. And, and, and God again says, um, where are you coming from, Satan? And, and Satan gives his response to and fro in the earth and walking up and down it. And, and look at verse three. That's a little bit different from, ch from verse chapter one. The Bible book says, and the Lord said unto Satan, has thou considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth? He's a, per he's, he, he's a perfect and upright man. He's one that feareth God, and again, he is sure, or he shuns evil. And here's, a, here's the difference in, 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 the latter, in the latter portion of this particular verse, as it was stated in, in chapter one. He says, he, he's an upright man, he's one that feareth God, and he ensures evil. And, and, the God, and God says, and still, isn't that something? He says, and still. When, when he holdeth, and still rather, he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou move me against him to destroy him without cause. God said, even though, saying you move me against him, 
to destroy him, he still maintained his integrity. Isn't that beautiful? He's referring to chapter one and all that Job had encountered. God says he's still, he's still holding on. He's still holding fast his integrity. Although Satan, you have moved me against him to destroy him with cause. You trying to make me destroy him for no cause at all. He said, but even, even in that situation, he says, Job has maintained his integrity. That's a beautiful thing. When, you, when the Lord, when God can come back and, and he can show he can have his confidence in his, in his servant that he held fast to his faith. And so in verse number four, so, so that wasn't enough for Satan. So, so God tells him, after all that you've done, you try to get, you try to destroy him. He said he's still holding fast his integrity. And Satan says in verse number four, he says, skin for skin, all that a man has will he give for his life. Isn't that something? Satan, Satan's a clever something here. So he now he's challenging God. First, remember in chapter one, he wanted to attack Satan for his things, the things that he had, all that he had. But now he says, skin for skin, all that a man had, he'll do it. Whatever he has to do is what he's saying. Whatever he needs to do to save his life, a man will save his life. Hmm. And, 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 so, and so he says, this is Satan. He says, but put forth thy hand now and touch his bones. See, see, Satan was not successful at, 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 at breaking Job by taking his things, by taking his wealth, by, in, by, by taking his children, you know, by taking his servants. He, 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 he was not successful there. But now he said, skin for skin. He said, now I want you to do. He said, but touch his bones. Touch his body, touch his health. That's what he's saying. Touch his health. He said, touch his health, touch his bones and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. See, sometimes I think Satan even tries us like that. He 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 he. he he ponders for us to go through challenges. He looks as we go through the various challenges of life and he's counting on us to turn our face against God, to give up on God. Have you ever heard, let me, let me, let me share this with you. Have you ever heard of someone that says, no, I don't do the, I don't do the God thing. And I'm just paraphrasing some of the, some of the comments people make. No, I'm through with that. I don't, I don't do the God thing no more. I don't believe. I'm, I, I don't do that no more. That's someone who has turned his back, his face on God. He's turned his heart to God, uh, on God. And, and, and that's, that's what Satan ultimately wants us to do. He wants us to curse God. He wants us to go through our trials and not, not hold fast to the end. He wants us to give in on our integrity. He wants us to turn to him in the Bible. And, and, and so now he's saying, he's saying to God, he says, touch his flesh, touch his flesh, touch his body, touch him, touch his bone. He said, and he'll curse you to, his, to your face. And look what the Lord says in verse. He said, and the Lord says, saying, behold, he's in your hand. But say, don't you touch. Don't you touch. Don't you touch his life. He said, I'm going to put my righteous man. I'm going to put my perfect man. I'm going to put my upright man. I'm going to took. I'm going to put my man that fears God before you, but don't you touch his life. Save his life. And so, and so the book says that, so, so what Satan does then, he, he goes from the presence of the Lord and he smokes Job. 
He smokes him with boils, with boils, boils rather, from the, from the, from the, the sole of his feet to the crown of his head. He's got boils all over his body. And, 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 and the book says he had so many boils over his body as he was covered that he took a, took a pot shed. And a pot shed is a, is a clay pot. It's a broken clay pot. Imagine a broken clay pot. And when you break a, a, a clay pot, it'll have rough edges on it. And so what he did is he took a, a pot shed. He took the broken pot clay pot with the sharp edges and he used it to scrape to scrape the balls from his skin the balls from his head the balls from his body he was in so much pain he was in so much pain that he took the ball he he, he took that pot shed and 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 and, 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 he, and he scraped himself and he, the Bible says, and he set himself down among the ashes. And see, remember, now, now, now Satan is attacking, attacking the bones, his flesh, his body. But now look what his wife comes on the scene. This is pretty much where we see her at. And his wife comes to Job in verse number nine, and she says, Job? Believe Brother Brian, internet froze. Oh, Joe, just curse God and die. Get it over with. But I like Joe when you look at Joe and you look at the presence of Joe. Joe says unto her, See, when your faith, when, when faith meets real life, Joe says it this way. He said unto her, thou speakest woman as a fool, one of a foolish woman speaking. He says, what? Shall we receive good at the hand of God and not receive evil? Shall we only receive the good from God? Shall, shall, we, shall we not have any suffering? Shall we not have any pain? Shall we not have any loss in life? Shall we not have any struggles of life? Shall we just receive the good? Can you imagine a perspective? Here's a man that has lost all that he has. All that he has. And, and, and not only did he lose all that he has, if he had his, if he had his health, he could, he could perhaps re replenish some of his financial loss but in his condition, he can't even work. And, but, but his perspective is one of faith. He says, can, shall, shall we not, shall we only receive the good from God? Can you imagine having the presence of mind, the spiritual mind? to be sober, to be under the, the influence of the spirit, to, to respond in such a way. He says, shall we not receive just the good? You know, sometimes I think we only want the good because sometimes we see our shortcomings, we see our struggles, we see our pain, we see our, our, our sufferings. As, as from a negative perspective and not the good. We, we see the problem, we don't see beyond the problem. We don't see beyond the tunnel when, when, when things are on, when we can be, when we're on the other side of the mountain. And, and so Job, so, so Job, he, he has a perspective. He says, uh, again, shall we not receive good in verse number 10 and two and 10? Shall we not receive um, good at the hand of a God, and shall we not receive evil? And the book says this, 
And in all that, in all this rather, Job did not sin with his lips. In other words, he didn't curse God. He, he, he held fast. He withstood, he withstood the word. Boy, my time is gone. Well, 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 let's look at these three friends. Because, because he, but so, so, so here we had Job. He, he, in, 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 he stood up to even to his wife. What a lesson for his wife. Because she had all but given up. And what that says to me is this, when all, when, even when others around us have given up, it's imperative for, for the believer, for the child of God, the children of God to hold on, to retain our integrity, to retain, retain our faith. That victory, that we might see the victory in the end. So, 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 so in verse number, number 11, the book says, it talks about this idea of his three friends. And his three friends, they came from afar. I don't want to paraphrase because I'm, I'm running out of time. His friends, they came from afar. And they had heard about, they had heard about how much wrath they had heard about, <coughs> excuse me. They had heard about his, his, his the evil, they, as, they, as the book says, his friends heard of all the evil that had come upon him. And, and, and so they came, um, they got together at an appointed time. They was going to go with him to see him, to mourn with him, and to, com to comfort him. And the book says, just to show you how bad off Job was, the book says that, that as the friends began to, to close in on the location where, where Job was at, they, they looked from afar. They could see from afar. They could see him, and 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 when they look, as as they could as they look, they did not even recognize him. They could not recognize him because remember he had balls from the on his body from the, the the crown of his from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. And the book says, and when they looked upon him, they 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 did not even they did not even recognize. And him and, and and the Bible says, and they lifted up their voice, they wept, they wept. And, and even when they went and they met with him, the book says that the Bible says in verse, verse 13 that they sat with him for seven days <clears throat> and did not speak a word. They were astonished, they were amazed, they were, they were, they were, they were. They, they, Here's a man that was almost, that was on his deathbed. His friends did not even recognize him. He's covered with sores and bars from his head to his feet. And even his friends thought that he had disobeyed God, thought that he had sinned against God. But, 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 but my point with that is this, is that even when our friends come, there's always we are, there's always commentary um, for those for, that's that's given to us when we are going through various stages of challenges or suffering. And and and, and oftentimes our friends, our neighbors, they have some have they have advice, they have recommendations. Everybody's going to tell you how to get well, but even in some cases. There'll be those that will discourage you to turn your back uh, against God Himself. Well, I must hasten on because I want to. I want. I want to give you just, just, just a couple of these. Here. I think I got time for. Uh, yeah, I got time for two. So, so, so when when when, when faith when, when when faith meets real life, you know, um, in, in in when faith meets real life. When your faith, rather, let me put it this way. When your faith is on trial, as we looked at in Job 1 and verse 9 through 11, when faith is on, when our faith is on trial, it requires a spiritual response. If you look in 1 Peter for us even today, in 1 Peter um, chapter number 5, 
in First Peter chapter five. I want to give you some tools for for when we deal with our challenges. We know how Job was able to um to survive, how he was able to be successful in 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 enduring and perseverance, exercising perseverance um, when his suffering came. Um, but but what about us today? What about us today? Whenever our whenever our faith meets real life, what happens for us is that our faith is then put on trial. And, and Peter gives us a remedy for dealing with this idea when faith is on trial. In, in, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse beginning at, at verse number 6, 1 Peter 5 and beginning at verse 6, the Bible says this, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God. I want you to see that. The, Peter says, here's what you need to do. Humble yourself, humble yourself uh, under the mighty hand. And that mighty hand is the hand, the one who has the ability, the one who's able to secure you, the one who's able to protect you, the one who's able to see you through. The book says, humble yourself under God, under the mighty hand, under his authority. He says, humble yourself under your God, excuse me, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And in other words, that God might lift you up. He might bring you through at the right time, no matter what it is you're going through, no matter what it is we have to suffer, no matter what, are, what losses we see in this life, the book says we first must humble ourselves under the hand of God, and he at the right time will exalt us in, in, the, in at due time. Isn't that beautiful? And then he says in verse number seven, whatever your troubles are, whatever your trials might be, whatever your, your, your struggles in life might be, the book says, cast all of your cares upon him, for he cares for you. And then I like what the prescription that Peter gives us. Peter says, here's what we have to do when your faith is on trial. He says, you have to be sober. And this idea of being sober is to be under control. It's to be under the influence. And, and I'm not talking about under the influence of, of, of alcoholic beverage. I'm talking about being under the influence of the spirit. You need to be sober. You need to allow the spirit to control your mind, control your thinking that you might, and then he says, be sober, be vigilant, be aware, be alert, be in tune, be, be, be watchful. He says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, even today, just like during the days of Job, the Bible says your adversary, the devil, he, he is going about, rolling, he's rolling rather, he, your adversary, rather, the devil is as a roaring lion. He's walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Satan's, Satan's tactics have not changed even since the days of Job, even since the days of Adam and Eve. He, he rather, his, his tactics have not changed, and he's roaming about even right now. So what the book tells us is that we must humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God that at, at the right time, he will lift us up. And we, we must be sober. We must be vigilant because Satan has a mission. And his mission is to turn the hearts of men against the great God of heaven. And then I'll say in verse number nine, he says, whom resists? Resist him steadfast in the faith. Thinking about your trials, thinking about your sufferings. Look what he says. Whom resists? The one that we are to resist is Satan, the accuser, the, the one who makes accusations, the one who is the enemy of God. The Bible says whom we need to resist. We need to withstand. We need to give the stiff arm. He says whom resists? How are you going to resist him? You resist him in the faith. You stay in the faith. You stay under the hand, the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you. He might lift us and carry us through. He says, he, he, he says, resist steadfast. In other words, don't, don't quit. Keep right on. Keep going. Be, be vigilant about it. Um, 
resist him steadfast in the faith. Why, 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 Peter? Knowing that the same afflictions that are accomplished in your brother, in, that are accomplished in your brother that are in the world. And then lastly, in verse number 10, but the God of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that we have suffered a while, he will make you perfect and he will establish, he will strengthen and he will settle you. So Peter says, be steadfast, <clears throat> resist the devil. He says, in the God of all grace, the one who has called us unto eternal glory by Jesus Christ. After we have suffered a while, he will make us perfect. He will establish us. He will strengthen you. And we will be settled. Oh, God is a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. And I think I'm out of time. A lot more for you, but I got to stop here. Um, but again, um, when, 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 um, when faith, when faith meets real life, it requires a decision. It requires us to make a choice. We got to make a choice. It's just like obeying the gospel. When you hear the gospel, you have to make a choice. And when faith, when, when, when faith meets real life, uh -huh. we got to make a choice to be steadfast, uh -huh. to resist the devil. Because there's a far greater reward. There's a far greater reward for anything that we might suffer or lose. I know you are. In, in eternal salvation. And God wants all of us to be just like Job. But he gives us the example of Job. But he expects us to be upright. He, he expects us to maintain our integrity. Uh -huh. No matter what the circumstances may be, uh -huh. we may lose, but we will gain. Uh -huh. And lastly, I say it this way when we're suffering, don't, don't focus on what is seen, uh -huh. look for the unseen, search for the unseen. Because victory is on the other side of the struggle. Mm -hmm. If you're here tonight, you're not a child of God. You can be one tonight. The choice is yours. Let's hear the word of God. How God loved the world so much. He sent his only begotten son that he might die for the sins of the world. And that is Jesus the Christ. You must believe that he is Christ. You must believe, you must hear the word, believe. You must be willing to repent of your sins. Be willing to confess God, Christ before mankind. And be willing to be buried in a watery grave of baptism. When faith meets real life, what will your response be? Oh. Thank you very much. May God bless you. May God keep us all. We want to thank Brother Sam Bryan tonight for an excellent job focusing on the life of Job, dealing with the dialogue between God and the devil. Then we have the dialogue with his three friends. Then the dialogue with God himself. Yes, and sir. then all of this. He maintains his integrity. Yes. And the Lord at the end blesses him with even more, yes. although he went through it and had a difficult time. How true it is today for you and I. Amen. What an excellent lesson. When faith meets real life, we too have some real situations. But if we hold to God's unchanging hand,
I do. He will bring us through. I want to thank you, Brother Sam Bryan, for the outstanding job. And of course, we want to wish you and even more, and your wife, Devin's 37 more years of happy marriage. Well, on tomorrow night, it is Brother Everett Good, and he's going to talk to us as we'll look forward. I believe it's about Paul, and we will consider about his struggle and his faith in the Lord. We are going to ask Brother Sedwick Will close us in a word of prayer. So let's prepare ourselves, share with someone else. Thank you for joining. Make sure someone else is on board to hear these powerful lessons when faith meets reality. We're now ready to pray. God bless you. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we're truly thankful, Father, for all your rich blessings. We Thank you, dear Lord, for waking us up and bringing us through this day, dear Lord. We're thankful especially for this opportunity that we had to uh, study your word, dear Lord, to hear it spoken to us from the mouth of Brother Brian. We're thankful, Father, for the words that he spoke, Father. Thankful for the simplicity and the practical nature of, of his lesson, dear Lord. We pray, Father, that you'll continue to Bless us, bless us uh, individually and collectively, Father, that we might uh, have that presence of mind, Father, when we face life's tr uh, trials and, and struggles, Father, that we might maintain our uh, spiritual and faith integrity, dear Lord. We pray, Father, that we'll remember the scriptures, remember the, the lessons, Father, and that we'll continue to uh, put those things into practice, Father, that we might glorify you in our behavior, Father. Help us, dear Lord, in all the ways that we stand in need. We pray, Father, for those who are suffering uh, uh, illnesses, Father, physical and, 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 and emotional, Father. We pray for those who are bereaved. We pray for safe travel for those who are traveling. We pray especially, Father, for uh, the various congregations of the churches of Christ uh, across the land, Father, that we be in unity, unity and purpose, Father, unity and, 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 and uh, behavior, dear Lord. And Father, we pray especially for the central congregation, praying for Brother Bryant and his family. Thankful, Father, that you blessed him in, in a mighty way, blessed him and his wife, dear Lord, and continue to bless their family. We're mindful of Josh, Father, who's away at this time, Father, we pray, Father, that you'll bless the minister, bless Brother Rupert, Father, and all those things that you put on his heart and, and, and at his feet to do, dear Lord. We pray for every member of the congregation, Father, and all the families represented. Uh, we pray, Father, for forgiveness of our sins. And we just ask, Father, that you continue to guide and direct us. We thank you especially for the gift of your dear son and our Savior, Father. And it's in his name and according to your will that we ask all things. Amen. Amen. We want to thank you tonight for being a part of. Look forward to tomorrow night. God go with you. May he bless you. In my life, in your life, some days that central make a difference. In my life, in your life, some days that central make a difference. In my life, in my life. The Central Church of Christ is a family-oriented congregation that believes that Jesus the Christ is the head of the church and that the Bible is right. We're comprised of a group of committed, imperfect people who are striving to walk with our Lord and Savior. Yes, Sundays at Central make a difference, but we want to ensure that we're impacting your daily lives. We're dedicated to making a difference not only in the lives of our church family, but also in our surrounding communities. Central offers several classes, ministries, and programs for people of all ages that we're confident will fit your needs. We'd love to show you why our congregation is the right church home for you. So stop on by and join us for worship service so that you can experience how Sundays at Central make a difference.
the Central Church of Christ. Come on, come on. Where Sundays on, at Central on, make a difference. She come on, come on, stop on this week. Sundays at Central.